Hi again, in this next tutorial for Film Wash Color Effects for After Effects Volume 5, we're going to start to look at how we can use these washes in a practical session and also take a look at the Film Wash Film Grain. So we're going to take a look at a, uh, a small sequence we have here. Now, one of the very cool things about Film Wash is that they are totally resolution independent. So here we are working on 4K files, but we can happily work on any resolution that After Effects can work with. The first thing I'm going to do is just quickly balance out my footage so that it's all generally speaking in this the same sort of area. So that it's, it's the same sort of brightness and the same sort of and the overall sort of white balance that I want to uh, to have it in. So if we take a look at this and use this as my reference frame. So let's just grab a copy there. And we'll come over to our shot here. And let's come to our added curves in here. Directing on the layer. If we take a look at this one here, we've got a slightly warmer look than we have here. So to warm this up, I'm just going to take my blues down just a little bit in the midtones, touch the reds upwards a little bit here and I'm going to add a little bit more add a bit of green take a little bit more blue out there so generally speaking that's maybe not quite as much green there actually there we go cool so generally speaking that's that's pretty much that's looking a lot more balanced than it was previously. And I'm going to copy that curves from here and then paste it into this other footage as well. So that now, well, maybe I want to add a little bit more red to this one. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got a fairly consistent look going on across all of our shots here. So it's time to add our adjustment layer over the top. Now, because we've got these three different types, we've got the film stock homage, we've got the cross color and the cross process. There is a sort of preferred order that, uh, that I like to do things in because layer order does, does count. And I like to get the, uh, the shots balanced up, then come in and use the, or find the film stock that, uh, that I most like for a particular feeling. Uh, and in this case, let's see what we can do just with the Agfa LC. This is quite a strong look. So we can back it off a little bit. It's quite a strong look. And I actually like it for, for this. It's given us a nice sort of um, sort of historical feel to it here. If we don't like it, let's just undo that and see if we can find something else. Let's take the uh, take a Polaroid PZ. And I don't I don't think this is the uh, the best choice for this image. Actually though that is fairly cool there. But it's not the it's not the mood that I'm going for. So we can take it something a little bit less stylized. So something like the uh, the Kodak Elite Color 200 B. Let's just see what that's doing before and after. Before and after. And that's just giving us a really nice, actually that's giving us a really nice starting point for this. Uh, let's see if we can, I don't think we need to mix it back. I don't think we need to take any out, but if we uh, make it stronger, take the slider down close to zero. maybe we get an even better look. So I've taken that to 27 and made it a little bit stronger now. I really like that look. So we'll rename our adjustment layer now so we know what uh, we know what we're coming back to. So we'll call this one Kodak Elite color 200B. Yeah, so now once I've got my um my overall color scheme sorted out on my overall film stock sorted out come in create another adjustment layer and here's where we can come into the cross color and cross process to really sort of lay down a mood 
So I want things a little bit warmer. So I'm going to look for things that sound warm and, and brown. Uh, I'm going to have a look first for, for Brief Encounter. And this has got quite a sepia feel going on to it. We can back that off quite a bit. So maybe even just touch in a few percentage points there. So I'll take that to about 89 in the mix back original. So we're only using 11% of the actual film wash there. And that's, that's kind of cool. Let's take a uh, screen grab before and after. Cool. I like, I like actually how that's, uh, how that's working out. Now maybe, so instead of going vintage with the brief encounter, uh, or even modern sepia, which also looks kind of cool. Uh, we'll go, let's take a look at the, uh, the gold evening instead. So just undo with uh, command Z or control Z. And we can mix back in a bit of the gold evening there. I'm liking how that's looking. And there's the before. And there's the after. And I like that. Cool. And now it's at this point here, once we've got the, the look sort of uh, sorted out, that we can come in and maybe some of the individual clips need a bit of extra work. So, so maybe the, uh, this, uh, the second clip, the middle one, needs a slightly more contrast in it. Again, we can just go back to the curves we've already got on the clip itself and just bump the contrast up on that individual clip. Just add a small S curve. Great, I really like how that's looking now. So now we've got the look for our film here. I want to just add a little bit more um, film feel into it, some more of that, that life. Uh, and the way we do that is with grain. Now with volumes three and four of Film Wash, uh, we've had uh, plugins that have been doing the grain for us. But with volume five, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to use the Film Wash Film Grain, which comes as part of the, uh, the volume five package. So I've imported the clips. If I go to our ProRes versions of the files here. Yeah, so I've imported all the clips I need here into After Effects, and they're just sat in their little folder here. And now it's just a simple case of deciding what type of grain we want for our particular shot. So do we want a, uh, an ultra fine grain? Zoom in on that. So this is a very, very fine grain here. So we've got an ultra fine grain. We've got a fine grain, medium, medium heavy, heavy, and a heavy fine grain. So that's a lot of grain, but very, very fine controlled grain. Now all of these are sampled from real film stock uh, and then treated to make sure that uh, when we apply them, we don't get any color shifts going on in our footage because that's that's really not what we uh, we want to we've we've gone in and we've done the hard work of actually defining our look here we don't want our grain to uh, to mess all that up i'm going to choose a medium heavy here so we can uh, we can see it a little bit better in this uh, in this demonstration now all of these clips have 250 frames worth of grain so the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to right click and go to interpret footage onto the main here. 
and I want to conform this so that it's running at the same frame rate as our composition, which is 25 frames a second, which is in, in this case, this is 25 frames a second. And the reason we do the reconform here is, uh, well, A, it's going to be a lot faster um, and we're not going to lose any information uh, when After Effects tries to sort of slow things down and speed things up. So we're going to conform this to, to the, the project rate here. I'm also going to loop this as well. Uh, let's loop this 10 times, that should be enough. Now this is a 1080p size. So when we put this down in our 4K image here, it's not going to quite fill up the, uh, the entire frame. If your composition resolution is 1920 by 1080 or smaller, you don't have to do anything else other than turn it to overlay. And then well, let's zoom in here and we'll turn this up to full so you can see really what it's, uh, what it's doing. If you look at the difference between this side and this side, especially when things start moving up, let's cache a couple of frames in here. What you see is the, the grain giving even more life to this image here. Now, because we are working at 4K, oops, and our grain isn't filling in the, uh, the entire range of the image here, we're going to have to do a, a quick tiling on this. And over in our effects and presets, we go to just type in tile here. We can use a, a CC repertoire tile and just expand this out. If you want to to fill the uh, to fill the entire frame, and then we can set that to overlay, of course here. So let's go back to our frame, our frame three three four. We'll take a look at the before and the after before and after. If you think that's a little bit too much grain here, all you have to do, take the opacity down and that will give you your final look. And that's really all there is to it. You just have to render out now and check out the results. If you've got any other questions or you've even created some uh, interesting projects using FilmWash, then please let us know at Curious Turtle dot com.